I think we've all felt a rush of creativity before where ideas seem to come to us out of thin air. Sometimes it's after reading a book we randomly picked up, or it's a TED talk we watched, or it's an exuberant conversation with a friend in a coffee shop that sparks this heightened state of imagination. Oftentimes ideas come to us in pathways we don't truly understand, and it's not a mental state that we can just will ourselves to or trigger that allows us to think outside the box. And although we can't crack the code of creativity, it doesn't mean that we should just copy others or lean on excessive consumption to create spontaneous, original ideas. In reality, by having our heads stuck in our phone or stuck in some book, we derive ourselves from experiencing the world around us and giving our mind time and space it needs for creative thought. We see imitation and overconsumption in all facets of society, a complete surrender and submission to copying others and just sticking to what works. For example, countless movies were inspired or somewhat copied from Alfred Hitchcock. His movie Psycho set the precedent for slasher films and led to the drawn out Halloween movie series. And we see it in the music industry too. These one of a kind iconic artists come about, change up the industry, but then what follows is a bunch of copycats and one hit wonders. And social media incentivizes this as well with their algorithms that boost trending audios and popular content styles. Now I don't see this as intentional laziness or just a quick cash grab, but I think it's just a natural byproduct and consequence of overconsumption and not allowing ourselves time for authentic ideas and thought. And to be honest, this is nothing new. This has gone on for centuries and it's perfectly explained in Arthur Schopenhauer's The Art of Literature, where he says that the safest way of having no thoughts of one's own is to take up a book every moment one has nothing else to do. Now he's not rejecting the value of books or reading because quite clearly that would be very hypocritical considering he's writing a book that he hopes that we read. But he is making a very important point, which is that knowledge isn't solely found in books. So earlier in the book, Schopenhauer makes a distinction between two forms of learning, natural learning and artificial learning. Natural learning looks a lot like going out into the world, observing phenomena, and experiencing one's particular instances and situations through your own subjective lens. Then artificial learning looks like books, teachers, lectures, and, and reading these kind of universal principles that govern uh, the world or nature. Both forms of learning have their place, and clearly, artificial learning offers us a much wider array of information and knowledge than we could ever gain purely through our subjective uh, experience in the world. But Schopenhauer does make a strong point that you know some of these universal values or principles and theories that we read about they don't always play out how they're expected to in reality. In layman's terms, in theory, theory is better than the practical. But in practice, the practical is better than theory. How often do we meet someone or go to a certain place or try a certain food and expect X result that we were told to experience? We're taught that this always happens and we should expect this. But as David Hume points out, you can't always lean on causality. And Schopenhauer makes this distinction and suggests that, you know, our subjective experience isn't always encapsulated in these kind of universal principles or theories. Now that's just one example of why we can't rely purely on artificial learning, but that we also need to go out and experience the world through our own subjectivity, as well as give our mind space and time to think organic, spontaneous thoughts. But he who is guided by his genius, he who thinks for himself, who thinks spontaneously and exactly, possesses the only compass by which he can steer aright. But with all of that said, I personally wonder if absolutely original ideas can truly exist. It seems like every revolutionary idea or piece of art was somehow inspired by a predecessor or is simply an improvement from something in the past. From the Sistine Chapel to the first generation iPhone, I'm sure Michelangelo and Steve Jobs had some sort of inspiration that led to their creations. But it does take a special kind of free spirit and unrestrained mind to think outside the box and create art out of inspiration. So my takeaway and perspective is we need both external input but also the internal capability to create new ways of thinking, new ideas, new notions, new concepts. In simple, we need to try to create as much as we consume. To wrap things up, in a competitive world, it's really difficult sometimes to set ourselves apart because it feels like 
everything's already been done. Every creative idea or piece of art or song has already been written and you know we're just stuck in this cycle of imitating each other. But I think as human beings what really sets us apart as a unique creature on this earth is our creativity and cognitive ability. So by building off others ideas and giving ourselves adequate time to wrestle with our solitary mind that's where the magic happens. So let me know what you guys think down below. What do you think about creativity and where ideas come from and this battle between inspiration and, and true authentic you know, ideas that come from nothing or come from internal? Let me know in the comments below. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe for more content like this and I'll catch you guys in the next one.